Welcome to the Iglesia Ni Cristo and the Bible. In our study for today, we will discover how the members of the genuine Church of Christ recognize the Lord Jesus Christ. So please stay with us. Friends, many people who belong to different churches or religious organizations hope that by professing belief in our Lord Jesus Christ, they will be counted among those whom He will save and who will enter the kingdom of the Lord God. Indeed, every man needs to recognize our Lord Jesus Christ and strive to be among those whom He will save. However, among those who affirm their faith in Christ, who are those who truly have the true knowledge of Him? Can those who have the wrong knowledge about the nature of the Lord Jesus Christ be considered true believers in Him? And who among those who claim to know Him are being acknowledged by the Savior? Well, we hope you'll join us for the next half hour as we answer these questions as well as many others, again, from the Holy Scriptures. Now, for the sake of those who may be thinking of this, Brother Edwell, we need to find out in the Holy Scriptures, is the true knowledge concerning the Lord Jesus Christ relevant, indeed relevant in determining the true church recognized by the Savior as His own? Well, yes, it is. And friends, let me read to you what we can find recorded here in the book of John, Chapter 10, the verse is 14. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known by my own. Based on these words of the Savior, we can conclude that the true knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ is relevant in ascertaining which is the true church or religion being acknowledged by Him, by the Savior, as His own. And since the Savior says that He is known by those whom He recognizes as His, Friends, we ask you, do you already know the Lord Jesus Christ? For example, do you already know what His true nature or state of being is? Remember, any church or individual who does not know the true nature of the Lord Jesus Christ does not belong to Him and is not recognized by Him. Now, what will our Lord Jesus Christ do to those whom He does not recognize? Well, let's read what He Himself said. Here in the book of Matthew, let me read to you chapter 7, the verse is 23. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. The Lord Jesus Christ himself tells us what he will do to those whom he does not recognize. On the day of judgment, he will drive them away. Since he does not recognize, he does not acknowledge such people to be his own. In other words, Brother Edel, they shall not be allowed to enter the kingdom of the Lord God in heaven, or they will not be saved. Friends, isn't it true that we all want to be saved? Thus, we should see to it that included among the things we understand or possess is the true knowledge concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. If we do, then we can be counted among those whom He Himself recognizes as His own. But is it enough for one to know and call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in order for that person to say that he truly knows the Lord Jesus Christ? Let us find out in the Holy Scriptures. What is the true knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ concerning his nature or his state of being? Let's consult his very own words. They're recorded in the book of John. Here in chapter 8, let me read to you verse 40. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Friends, the true knowledge concerning the true nature of the Lord Jesus Christ is that He is a man. In other words, He is a human being. Now, according to whose testimony? Well, it's according to the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. Do you believe in what the Lord Jesus Christ Himself tells us? Do you believe that what He says is the truth? In this verse that read to us by Brother Edwell, the Lord Jesus Christ tells us that He is a man in His nature or state of being. He also underscored His distinction from the true Lord God. It is very clear that the Lord God from whom the Lord Jesus Christ heard His teaching is different from the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. Thus, one of the marks by which the true church can be identified is its belief concerning the true nature or state of being of the Lord Jesus Christ. The true church recognizes that the Lord Jesus Christ is a man in his nature or state of being. And such understanding is true and correct, since this is in agreement with how the Savior introduces himself. 
which is why we should seek out the true church, the true church that upholds such a doctrine. Such a church is truly of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's turn to the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, Brother Edel. Did the apostles also agree that the Lord Jesus Christ is a man in his nature or state of being? Yes, they did. And let's read one of the apostles here in the book of Acts, chapter 2, the verse is 22. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs, which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. Friends, the apostles also agree that the true nature of the Savior is that of a man. In fact, the apostle Peter is one of those who testifies concerning this. And let us always remember that the apostle Peter was one of those who accompanied the Lord Jesus Christ during his ministry here on earth. In other words, he was one of the eyewitnesses to the Lord Jesus Christ. And what does the apostle Peter say? He says that the Lord Jesus Christ is a man attested by the Lord God with mighty works and wonders. Friends, this is how the apostles recognized the Lord Jesus Christ. Is this also how you recognize the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ? Members of this church, the Iglesia Ni Cristo or Church of Christ, do not belittle the Savior. If we recognize Him as a man in His nature or state of being. Why is that? Because that is how the Bible introduces the Savior. But what all the more proves that we do not belittle the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, we recognize the many attributes, the many qualities that He has, and that are recorded in the Holy Scriptures. Let's read one of those here in the book of 1 Peter, dear friends. Chapter 2, the verses are 21 all the way down to 22. For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow His steps, who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. We accept the biblical truth that the Lord Jesus Christ is truly human in his state of being. But at the same time, we accept that he possesses certain attributes that cannot be found in any other human being. For example, the Lord Jesus Christ is the only human who did not commit sin. But some of our friends might be wondering, why is this quality, Bert Edwell, so special? What does the Bible say regarding ordinary human beings? Well, again, dear friends, let's read. But this time from the book of Romans here in chapter 5. Let me read to you chapter 5, verse 12. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. If you notice... The Lord Jesus Christ is truly different from all ordinary human beings because all have sinned, and that includes you and I. Everyone except the Lord Jesus Christ. And what other attribute does the Lord Jesus Christ have or possess which could not be found in ordinary men? Well, again, let's turn to the Holy Scriptures, but this time to the book of Acts. Here in chapter 5, the verse is 31. Him God has exalted to His right hand to be Prince and Savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Another attribute of the Savior mentioned by the Apostle Peter is that He has been exalted or appointed by the Lord God to be the Savior when Judgment Day comes. And if you notice, the Lord Jesus Christ has also been appointed to give forgiveness of sins. The members of this church, the Iglesia Ni Cristo, accept and recognize these attributes or qualities which can be found in Him, in the Lord Jesus Christ, and in no other person. But this does not change the fact that He is still human in His nature or state of being. Friends, when we return, we will learn of other attributes that the Lord Jesus Christ possesses. So please, stay with us.
We're so happy that you're still with us. Friends, if you remember, we learned earlier that no other human being has been exalted or appointed by the Lord God to be the Savior when Judgment Day comes, except, of course, our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is why we should recognize the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. Now, aside from this, what are the other attributes of the Lord Jesus Christ which we should all recognize? Well, we mention it all the time. Jesus is both Lord and Savior. And we can read about that in the book of Acts, chapter 2, the verse is 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. The Apostle Peter also testifies that we should recognize Jesus not only as Lord, but also as the Christ. So if we preach that the Lord Jesus Christ is man in his nature or state of being, it does not mean that we no longer recognize him as Lord. The Lord God made Jesus both Lord and Savior. And this proves that his Lordship is not inherent in him, but was given to him by the Lord God or by the Father in heaven. Now what other quality does the Lord Jesus Christ have which makes him distinct from an ordinary man? Well, he is the only mediator we have towards the Lord God. And let's read about that here in the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2, the verse is 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul clarifies fully well that the only mediator between the Lord God, our Father in heaven, and man, that includes all of us, is by nature also a man. The Apostle Paul points to the Lord Jesus Christ as the man who is the only mediator between the Lord God and us human beings. Thus, if anyone recognizes a mediator who is not a man, he does not have the true mediator nor the true Christ introduced by the Bible. Now, because of these great attributes with which the Lord God endowed the Lord Jesus Christ, what does the Lord God command everyone to render to our Lord Jesus Christ? We are all commanded to render worship or praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's read about that here in the book of Philippians, chapter 2. The verses are 9 all the way down to verse 11. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Although the Lord Jesus Christ is human in his state of being or nature, yet he possesses many attributes that cannot be found in any ordinary man. One of these attributes is that the Lord Jesus Christ alone is the man who should be worshipped by each one of us. And that is exactly what we do, Brother Edwell. Friends, we need to point out that we worship the Lord Jesus Christ not because He is God, but because it is the will or the commandment of the Lord God written in the Holy Scriptures. But what if by not recognizing the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lord God, someone is accused of not believing in the Lord God? Brother Edwell, would that be a valid accusation? It would not. And we are basing that not on our own reasoning or opinion, but on what the Bible itself teaches. Friends, let me read to you 1 Corinthians chapter 8, the verse is 6. Yet there is for us only one God, the Father, who is the creator of all things and for whom we live. And there is only one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things were created and through whom we live. Friends, if you notice, the apostles, specifically the apostle Paul, they never preached that the only true Lord God is composed of three persons. For example, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. According to them, there is only one God, and He is none other than the Father, who is the Creator of all things. So we ask you, would you accuse the apostle Paul of not believing in the Lord God simply because he also did not teach that the Lord Jesus Christ is the one true Lord God? Now let us find out, from whom did the apostles learn that the Father alone is the true Lord God? Well, they learned it from the Lord Jesus Christ, among others. 
Let's read what the Lord Jesus Christ Himself said here in the book of John 17. The verses are 3 and 1. This is eternal life, to know Thee who alone art truly God, and Jesus Christ whom Thou hast sent. After these words, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify Thy Son, that the Son may glorify Thee. If you notice, our Lord Jesus Christ Himself taught that His Father alone is the true Lord God. In fact, the Lord Jesus Christ did not introduce Himself as the one true Lord God. He did not. Or He did not introduce Himself as the other true Lord God. Friends, the belief on the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ is contrary to the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ Himself, as well as that of His apostles. Now, aside from the Lord Jesus Christ and His apostles, who else upholds the belief that the Father alone is the true Lord God? Those true servants who came even before the Lord Jesus Christ taught the same thing. Let's read about one of them here in the book of Malachi, chapter 2, the verse is 10. Don't we all have the same Father? Didn't the same God create us all? Then why do we break our promises to one another? And why do we despise the covenant that God made with our ancestors? Friends, the true servants of the Lord God have always upheld monotheism. They firmly believed there is only one true Lord God, and He is none other than the Father. Thus, we may never find any biblical basis for the belief that the Son as well as the Holy Spirit are also gods. The Bible clearly testifies that the Father alone is the only true Lord God. And that was true not only during the Old Testament times, it's also true during our time, which is part of the New Testament times. That is indeed true, Brother Edel. Now, for those who may be wondering about the teaching that the Lord Jesus Christ is true God, and whether this can be found in the Holy Scriptures, that will be the focus of our discussion when we return. So please stay with us. Welcome back to our discussion. Friends, we learned earlier that the Lord Jesus Christ and His apostles taught that the Father alone is the only true Lord God. In fact, even the early servants of the Lord God upheld the truth that the Father is the only true Lord God. Now, for those who may be wondering about the teaching that the Lord Jesus Christ is God and whether this can be found in the Gospel or in the Holy Scriptures, let's listen to the testimony of a Catholic author. Here in a book entitled, Jesus, God, and Man, authored by Raymond E. Brown, let me read on page 30. Jesus is never called God in the Synoptic Gospels. And a passage like Mark chapter 10, verse 18, would seem to preclude the possibility that Jesus used the title of Himself. Even the fourth Gospel never portrays Jesus as saying specifically that He is God. The sermons which act attributes to the beginning of the Christian mission do not speak of Jesus as God. Thus, there is no reason to think that Jesus was called God in the earliest layers of New Testament tradition. This negative conclusion is substantiated by the fact that Paul does not use the title in any epistle written before 58. Those who teach that the Lord Jesus Christ is God admit that such a teaching cannot be found in the Gospel or in the Holy Scriptures. Aside from being unbiblical, such doctrine is contrary to the teachings of the Bible. Thus, it becomes a different Gospel and, of course, should be rejected. Some of our friends may be asking, Brother Ramo, 
if it is not in the Bible, then when was this doctrine that the Lord Jesus Christ is God, when was this crafted or created? Only in the year 325 A.D. Ver. Edwell. Friends, I shall read of that here in the book, Discourses on the Apostles' Creed, authored by Clement H. Crock. Let me read on page 206. Thus, for example, it was not until 325 A.D. at the Council of Nicaea that the Church defined for us that it was an article of faith that Jesus is truly God. The teaching that the Lord Jesus Christ is God is a man-made doctrine. It was only invented by a council or meeting of high officials of the Catholic Church in Nicaea in the 4th century AD. The Bible had already been complete for many years before that teaching or that belief was formulated. Hence, our Lord Jesus Christ and His apostles had nothing to do with it. But those who adhere to the teaching or to the belief that the Lord Jesus Christ is God argue that the Bible does not contain any statement of the Lord Jesus Christ expressly stating that He is not God. Your reaction to that, Brother Edward? Well, we can cite so many passages in the Holy Scriptures where the Lord Jesus Christ proves that He is different from the true Lord God. For example, dear friends, let me read to you His words recorded in the book of Luke, chapter 24. The verse is 39. Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. Friends, the Lord Jesus Christ demonstrated in this passage how He is completely different from a spirit. According to Him, He has flesh and bones unlike a spirit. Why is it very important, Bert Edwell, that we understand and we accept that the Lord Jesus Christ is not a spirit in His nature or state of being. Well, let's listen to the explanation of the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. Here in the book of John, chapter 4, the verse is 24. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. If you notice, the Lord Jesus Christ Himself points out that the Lord God is spirit in a state of being or in His nature. So the statement of the Lord Jesus Christ that He is different from a spirit is tantamount to saying that He is different from the one true Lord God and that He is not the true Lord God. But there are people who try to get around this by saying that the Lord Jesus Christ is both truly man and truly God. But Edward, does the Bible support that teaching? No, it doesn't. And we can prove that by reading these passages for example, the one recorded in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28. Let me read to you verses 1 down to 2. The word of the Lord came to me again, saying, Son of man, say to the prince of Tyre, Thus says the Lord God, Because your heart is lifted up, and you say, I am a God. I sit in the seat of gods, in the midst of the seas. Yet you are a man and not a God. Though you set your heart as the heart of a God. If you notice, the Lord God Himself, He does not allow any man to be both man and God. On the other hand, Bert Edel, will the Lord God allow Himself to be both man and God? He will not, and we can support that by these words of the Lord God Himself written in the book of Hosea. Here in chapter 11, the verse is 9. I will not execute the fierceness of my anger. I will not again destroy Ephraim, for I am God and not man, the Holy One in your midst, and I will not come with terror. The Lord God Himself tells us He is not man. So the belief that someone could be both truly man or truly human and truly God is contrary to the teachings of the true Lord God Himself recorded in the Holy Scriptures. We have learned the great importance of having the true knowledge about the Lord Jesus Christ. Because only those who truly know Him are being acknowledged or recognized by Him as His own. Friends, thank you so much for joining us in this episode of the Iglesia Ni Cristo and the Bible. We hope that you have once again benefited from our discussion. Before we part ways, please join us in a short prayer.
our most gracious and compassionate Father in heaven. Yes, Father. Thank you so much for giving us this blessed chance. Yes, Father. So once again, receive your words of truth, yes, which Father. we ought to fulfill in our daily lives. Amen. Merciful Father, may you please bless all our friends and viewers. Yes, Father. Please grant us the faith and conviction that we all the more need, yes, Father. so that we may all come to the knowledge of the truth that you are the only true Lord God yes, whom we ought to worship and serve until the very end of our lives. Amen. Lord Jesus, we do not forget to pray unto you. Yes, Lord. We wholeheartedly recognize all the qualities and attributes that the Lord God has given you. Yes, Lord. May you please once again speak to him in our behalf yes, Lord. and forgive us for all the sins we have committed. Amen. Lord God, once again we come before you. Yes, Father. We ask for all these blessings only through the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.